Northeast Tonight, brought to you by Oil India Limited, conquering newer horizons, and Pew's Group of Institution Gohati. Hello and welcome to Notice Tonight, the show that decodes the region. The battle against the deadly COVID-19 is on, but the battle to break the deadlock and bring our crippling economy back to life is yet to begin in right earnest. Yes, the union government is doing its bit and has committed to infuse 20 lakh crore worth of packages and programs into the system to provide relief to the people. But can a nation and people depend only on government bailouts? This is the big question. What are the states doing on their own to assist the people to make them stand on their own feet again? More precisely, what does Assam and the rest of the northeastern states need to do at this juncture? How can new livelihood options be created? What are we doing to do what are we going to do with the lakhs of our people who are returning home? In Assam alone, an estimated 10 to 12 lakh people are expected to come home. What should Assam look at apart from its traditional strengths like oil and tea? To discuss the subject, I am joined from Pune by writer and commentator Moyur Bora. Political analyst Swapnanil Barwa is joining me from Guwahati and in the studios with me, I have Mr. Pabitra Buraguhai, the President of FINA, Dr. Abhijit Sharma, Director of the Indian Institute of Entrepreneurship, and commentator and entrepreneur himself, Sham Kanu Mohanto. Gentlemen, welcome to Notice tonight. Let me go straight to you, Moyur Bara in Pune. Moyur, uh, you know, we are saying we are, we are comparatively happy with the health battle, with the medical battle that is going on in, across the country to deal with the virus. But are you happy with the way uh, things are shaping up? Yes, we are aware, as I said, that the government is doing its bit. 20 lakh crore is not a small amount. But can we only depend upon the government? What is your prescription for the states in the Northeast? What should we do? Yeah, Vasbir, uh, I think you are very right. Uh, depending solely on the government in any kind of situation, be it in an emergency, be it in a health emergency, be, in a, be it in an economic turmoil is not the right thing to do. But as a citizen of the country, I think every human being and more so about the retreating and returning worker, they will definitely expect something from the government. And government also with all their limitations, they have been trying their level base because whether you are in the government or a journalist or a civil society, this is the first time this kind of but uh, tragic thing you have seen in life. The first time you have encountered a, a tragedy of this proportion when the pandemic is, is threatening to ravage the whole world. In such a backdrop, when Assam and few other states where a lot of migrants, people, they used to go to other part of the India, now they are retreating. So now it's a question of reverse migrants. So in a situation of reverse migration taking place and affecting northeastern states and more so Assam, I think we must have got a true or three-pronged strategy and most importantly, we must think about that these are our brothers and sisters and mostly brothers and at no point of time, we cannot have a condescending or patronizing attitude towards them. They are the real engines of growth. But having said that, when they want to come forward, whether Assam government, whether the state of Assam, where the Assamese society will be able to absorb them right. as meaningfully as they were doing in other places. So I think for that, there has to be a committee in which a psychologist, an economist, an entrepreneur, and few other people socially connected, they have to be there. And all those people should be given a patient hearing whether the three questions are very, very simple, whether they want to go back to their respective state. If they say yes, once things settle down, they can go back. If they do not want to go back, they can, whether they are willing to take a farming in their homeland, if they are right. willing to do it, then right. they can talk out a different strategy. But the last point was weird. But if they say that they are, they do not have land, they do not want 
want to take up farming, then I think the, situ uh, the question of non-farm sector, OPS, entrepreneurship development, in which Dr. Ovisit Sarma is the director of Indian Institute of Entrepreneurship, all those organizations should bring forward and only not depending on the government, civil society and the government, we must try to give a solution in the right areas to these brothers Absolutely. who are retreating because of reason right. which are beyond their control. Right. I, I, I am also joined by political analyst uh, Mr. Sopnanil Barwa. Uh, for the first time outside the studio, Sopnanil Barwa, how is it feeling? And what are some of your opening remarks? Uh, uh, well, uh, I think it's a different kind of experience. And it is, again, I think, you know, the, every time in these COVID days, we are getting new experiences. This is another new experience for me now. Yeah. To be speaking to you from maintaining social distance in the true sense of the term. And from the comfort well, of your I've home. Just heard and, yeah. yes, but he what are some of the points? points? <laughs> what are some of the key points that you'd like to make as opening remarks? Very quickly. Uh, I mean, see, this is now one thing is definite that we are going to have 10 to 12 lakh people coming back into our homes. And so now the preparation time has begun for the government and also for civil society. Now the immediate, uh, you know, once they come back here, the first thing is the quarantine. The second thing is the rehabilitation or relief rather till they settle down to a different, uh, you know, a regular income. And third is the rehabilitation. So now the question is that once these people are coming back, all of them will hopefully are going into the quarantine camps. Yeah. They'll be there for 14 days, which allows the government a lot of time to do Give, do a social profiling of these people as to what is Absolutely. their level of skills, where are they coming from, what are the industries they were working in, what is the kind of prospect of their going back to those kind of places. This social profiling is more than sufficient time given in the quarantine camps of the 14 days or 7 days, whatever they'll be there. So this, I think, is primarily somewhere we really have to begin. The government as a whole, all the departments that hope to engage them, in right. the rehabilitation process, okay. that is through the so Mandela your and emphasis, through the food programs. Right. Your emphasis. I mean, now my my thing is that 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 of your relief package that you are giving to those people who are coming back to the state. Yes, please immediately give them the job card in the quarantine center itself. Please take their social profiling in the quarantine center itself. Please give them. You know, uh, to try to find out some kind of an occupation for them in the center itself. Now, okay. once you have that information, you okay. will also get okay. to I think, know I think, I, that I, where I, were they hold your thoughts. before. Sopnil Barwa, hold your thoughts. Uh, Dr. Abhijit Sharma, I, I think that's a very fantastic suggestion. I, I, I mean, it makes a lot of sense what Sopnil Barwa is uh, basically saying. How do you react? You know, he's saying that we have to do the social profiling of the skill level of these people who are coming home. But it is not only these people. It is people within the state who have lost their businesses, who have lost their livelihood because of the prolonged lockdown. Of course, we are not. We cannot blame the government for the lockdown. It's a situation that is compelling us to have the lockdown. So how would you respond? What is your prescription? Uh, let me begin uh, by saying uh, that this is an unprecedented event. Right. Never in the history of the world we have seen an event like this where the entire world has been affected. Uh, so I guess uh, we are all grappling with how do we go forward. But having said that, uh, I would like to say uh, two things. Uh, I agree with uh, what Mr. Sapnali Burwa said. Uh, the measures will be short term and medium term. In the short term, uh, uh, while we are looking at the people who are coming back, yes, uh, we, we uh, provide them some relief. But I would also say in the short term, let's revive the economy of people who are within. Uh, there are, I'll just give you a small example of uh, uh, money that is required for all these enterprises to start up the work. And uh, what we have done in I is that we've seen that there are some government funds for minimum support price. Yeah. And uh, we have done it in the tribal communities where they had uh, uh, some lot of uh, collection being done. And yet uh, they're not being able to sell because yeah. the lines have been disrupted. And we have asked the government to provide uh, cash for these people to you know, get immediate cash so that the economy can be revived. Mm -hmm. So what we are saying is two-prong. While we are looking at these uh, profiling, these uh, uh, people who are coming back, skills, and also mapping resources which are around. Yeah. Uh, but we also need to revive the economy by uh, putting some cash that is short term. 
Medium term, I'll come back a little later on. But uh, okay. there is a short term immediate that is we need to do. Immediate, so sir. there is some cash uh, has to flow and it has to, some cash has to be infused to, you know, make the economy at least up and moving yes. at this critical time. Mr. Pabitra Buragohai, the president of FINA. Now, what is the industry? How is the industry looking at this situation, particularly the industry in the northeastern region? Let us focus on Assam. You know, we all know that our strength in tea and oil, but that is a particularly organized sector. Let's keep that aside. Now, as far as the other things are concerned, our there was a lot of economic activity which has gone for a six because of the lockdown. So what are some of the points uh, to start with that you'd like to make? You see, the situation, you all know, there's something very serious all over the world. Yeah. But at the same time that COVID-19 <coughs> has teased us a new thing, that is, we have to be self-reliant. COVID-19, because of COVID-19, we have come to know that we have to be self-reliant. Yeah. For that, government of Assam can conduct a survey the products coming out from outside to Assam and examine if we can take up all these products manufactured in this state, then it will be definitely helpful. And also, you see that MSME sector, which is the only core sector of Northeast, all the industries belongs to MSME sector, 99% belongs to MSME sector. And at that too, all are from first generation entrepreneurs. So now that government of India has uh, that uh, 20 lakhs uh, package, out of that, that particular package, that is collateral free loan. That is most important for Nostis. Because collateral free loan, because our, our main problem is to access to the capital, scarcity of fund, and that will definitely help to the local industries to start to it. And also those who are coming back, they are yeah. not our liabilities, they are our assets, they are our brothers. So, I, think, I, think, I think there's a very good opening remark made by the final president, Pabitra Buragohai. He said two things, collateral free loan to the MSMEs and think of the people who have returned back home as assets and not liabilities. Uh, Shamkana Mohanto, you know, when we talk about the push to the MSMEs, but we must also try to distinguish the fact that there is a different uh, system as far as MSMEs are concerned in the northeastern region. Uh, they are not 5 crore, 6 crore MSMEs. Uh, they they are just about, you know, 50 lakhs, 70 lakhs, 75 lakhs, 1 crore. Our MSME size is almost like that in the northeastern region, if I am not mistaken. Is that, uh, 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 do you think the government has to look at it slightly differently? And what are your general opening remarks? I have got two points to make here. First uh, is about, mig uh, secondly about migrants. First about the, uh, what you have mentioned, our entrepreneurs. This biggest stress we have seen is amongst the small entrepreneurs. Yeah. He may be having a shop, a mobile shop, a tour operator, or a small industry, they are in serious trouble. This package of government of India, which is bank driven, the majority part of this 20 lakh crore is bank driven incentive package. So if you are, have, you are going to take a loan of around one crore, you are going to benefit a collateral free loan at a reduced interest rate. But the problem is not that. Problem is that I have got interest. I have got EMI to be paid for last four months. I am not being able to pay. First thing, Assam government should come on board. Assam government should come on board and support this number. There's a big number. I'm talking about they are recruiting around 10, 15 lakhs of people. So there must be number of people, maybe 40, 50,000, but they are recruiting 10 lakhs of people. What I'm trying to say, these people need a small support in terms of interest reimbursement. That money not necessarily come to the person, it should go to the bank directly. This is an intervention government has to come on board because if he is not being able to repay his dues, he's not going to take further loan. His money is not... His money is required, his interest cost is, is yeah. really affecting, number yeah. one. So first thing, government of Assam should support this in this time of crisis, interest reimbursement. Secondly, about the migrants, Sapnilla has said very rightly, that we have been talking about profiling the migrants, about the skill. I, one thing I must tell you, what I have heard so far, most of the migrants are electricians, bar benders, they're, they're doing extremely well in Kerala or Karnataka and Chennai. But in Assam, we hardly have a, if you, you know, Wasbi does house, if you have an AC mechanic, do we get an Assamese person? We don't get. These migrants, if they stay, they will bring some skill here. If we stay, I think they will bring a skill and they will in turn create a skill-based economy. I think some of the migrants will bring a lot of value to Assam and some of them will go back. Bricks, uh, skill profiling is important and then try to motivate them. They can be trainer. They can be trainer's trainer. Yeah. They can help in the entire skill development program of government of Assam. They can create skill. This skill can be imparted to lakhs of yes, our youth. Yes. I can strongly believe 
these migrants workers can be our strength provided we use them well regarding their further thing they must get into farming or, or 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 entrepreneurship a lot of other things are possible but the biggest point i am looking at them as skill manpower imparting skill to many other trainers because we lack trainers See, there. there are two things uh, dr abhijit sharma there are two things here one as everyone is saying uh, so so nicely said by both uh, sopnanil barwa and sham kana mohanta and of course uh, mr pavitra bura gohai is also saying that they should they are our assets but the issue is we have got two sets of people one is the people who are coming from outside who who, who may not get their jobs back at all so one set is that the second set is the small businessmen within the state or within the region who have lost their jobs their uh, their businesses have absolutely crashed because of the lockdown because there is no transaction transaction so now as you said the cash flow now there are a lot of suggestions that farmers should get cash what about this businessman what about this small time people oh, do you think there should be a cash as you said what do you mean that government should give them cash to survive for some time or they should be utilized straight away but if so in what way can the government utilize them no uh, uh, like i said in a short time uh, like i agree with totally with shantanu that's what i meant that i think we need to stimulus provide the stimulus so that is very very important having said that i would like to bring a little uh, a little i will say twist to the skill uh, frame uh, while we are talking about and looking at people who are returning back don't forget there are a whole lot of people who are working here has also returned back now today in assam we have value chains which have been disrupted they have been telling that you know people are moving uh, farm goods from the farm gate to the towns are becoming difficult because farm uh, value chains have been disrupted because the bihari labor has gone back to bihar now what i am saying is that like shankanu said that while we profile try to put these guys match this in terms of the requirements we also have huge requirement in the rural areas itself where the value chains are getting shattered we need to look thoroughly these value chains i am looking at very very short value chains local value chains because i think we all are now focusing on being self reliant focusing on local so if we can build up local value chains the first element and that is all the disrupted now okay. and then getting local these people people into this would be very useful local value value chains okay i'm coming to you in a while uh, mr pavitra bura gohai and mr sopnil barwa let me quickly go once again to moyur bora uh moyuru see the government estimates the various leaders various government officials and leaders are estimating that the number of people who will be returning to assam at the end of the day will be total about 10 to 12 lakhs now let us say let us assume that about 2 lakhs have come back now the point is 10 lakhs or 8 lakhs whatever is still yet to come is it a good idea for the government to pay them an monthly allowance and tell them to hang on wherever they are if they have no problem about accommodation and food now why i am saying is the number of covid cases among the returnees are going up today in a single day already there has been 60 cases uh, and and 95% of this almost all of them are actually in quarantine who have come back from outside the northeast they have been coming from major cities in the country now is does it does according to you is it a good idea or or of course from the humanitarian humanitarian point of view you cannot stop anyone from coming home Yeah, yeah, that's very true. You cannot stop uh, anyone from coming out. But having said that, the whole challenge when the COVID-19 had raged for the last three months, it is always a tussle between life and livelihood. So, if government genuinely wants to give some uh, money to the people for say two or three months, I don't mind. See, there is uh, some news report in Assam in last few days. There are many laborers in the state of Kerala who do not want to come back. Yeah. They say the kind of facilities we are getting in the state is absolutely awesome. So, I am not going to return. And what I am going to do so that is why i say and all i don't uh, agree with the figure of this 10 lakh or so i think at the most it will be around 5 to 6 lakh but it is not the time to quarrel about the or having a argument about the figure what i mean to say and slightly disagree with uh, uh, our uh, mm -hmm. uh, borwada that what he has been sapnanil borwada not about his main assertion but mainly about the timing see wasbir 
one thing we have to imagine try to imagine yourself in the shoes of a migrant labor who has come back so when he is quarantined those people they do not understand many of them appreciate the importance of quarantine at that point of time if you talk about mapping if you talk about what skill you have in the quarantine center itself it will be like overburdening themselves so what i am telling let the 14 day be over let there be a district level committee as i highlighted in during my first assertion also yeah. with a doctor with an entrepreneur Winner with an economist, and thereafter, logically, within a month, I am not saying it's going to hang around for all time to come. Within a month or so, try to do something. But if you want to want to rush through things in the quarantine center itself, many of the medical protocol you will be compromised. Many of the medical things you would not be able to adhere to, and infection rate may further go up. So mm -hmm. I think all those things have to be kept in mind. Mm -hmm. I do not have what he has said, but about the timing after quarantine only, that mapping of resources. Then other kind of advisory and counsel, holistic counsel to the returning laborers should be attempted at, not before. Okay, okay, that's very interesting. Uh, what the way uh, Moyur has put it. Yes, I mean, Kanu, carry on. Uh, I'm coming first to first point. I wanted. I was talking to some of my friends in Delhi. I was told, I was telling them the situation in Assam is not good because we are stressed. Our facilities are stressed, and on the rail can be a very serious carrier of corona. And quarantine centers are hotbed of corona. So I, I was requesting my friends, is it possible to and discourage them to travel if unless it is extremely yeah. important? That so is the he, point I made when so I said the Canada government give them an allowance. So he says that you are giving me treat two thousand rupees and I cannot sustain in two thousand. The first thing is that in the, in Delhi or in Mumbai they are on eight ten thousand rupees. The problem right now, a lot of these people are feeling that they do not have money to uh, to sustain in Delhi Mumbai first. Yeah. Second point, what some of the people are feeling homesick. They want to come back. If I want to die, I want to die in Assam. Yeah. Some of people have said like this. Yeah. I have done a self. Yeah. So these Very are the psychological reasons why people are. Uh, but right now, see, uh, Assam government is giving 2,000 because that is their capacity. Ideally, I would have expected government of India coming in and giving a support. That would have stopped, okay, so reduced the now, burden on quarantine. That is, a, that is a point we need to develop. Uh, Pobitra uh, Buraguhai, yeah. you know, uh, we are giving. Uh, is, do you, do you, do you, is there merit in this argument that, you know, we should pay a Proper uh, uh, proper allowance to these people. Two thousand rupees is definitely not enough, but that is the best the Assam government can do. Do you think that in, uh, government of India should also step in and increase this amount so that we discourage people from coming unnecessarily? That will be very helpful if those who are wants to stay back there. If we can provide them the minimum basic amenities, they will stay back. Amenities? And no, we have to provide them with cash. Cash, and that is uh, in, even in Assam also for initially for a few months. If government can provide uh, the minimum basic needs, it will be helpful. But in the meantime, we should create a database, database of the immigrants, those who are coming back. So we should create the uh, database no, segregating. No, uh, no, no, sorry, uh, migrants. Sorry, my, uh, 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 they, they, yeah. they are migrants. Those yeah. migrants are coming back. We should create a database segregating data, their qualifications, experience, skills and the, where they were working. And all this information should be shared with that industries and other departments so that we can absorb accordingly. Because industries are also looking for a skilled people. These people- Absolutely. So I think, I think that, that database that, is extremely important. Now, now, another thing I'd like to ask you, Pabitra Baraga, I'm coming to you in a moment, Sopnanil Barua. Uh, you know, has the an organization like FINA, uh, we, have, we have trade and industry bodies like CII, mm -hmm. FICCI, uh, you know, they are pan-India organizations, but let us focus on your organization, which is finer, which is, uh, in, you know, much more uh, uh, rooted okay. in the region yeah. and the state. My question is, are you prepared or have you ever thought of agriculture and farming as an industry? You have not. That is, that is always the problem, isn't it? Yeah, it, this is a very good question. You see, recently, very recently, that uh, industry department that uh, the Commissioner of Industries has given us one data, that is... State GDP contributions are coming from 39% from industries, 44% from uh, service sectors, only 17% from agriculture. agriculture. Yeah. So 83% is, you can say, it's an urban economy, service sector and industries. But, but, only, but only, more than 80% of the people are living in the agriculture. agriculture. So that is, is 17% is the rural economy. So need of the hour is to put more importance and give more trust on the royal economy. How okay. we can lead the royal economy. Is it only the responsibility of the government? No. Why not yes. organizations like Finer take the lead? Yes. Show them the way, do some hand-holding exercises. Yes, yes. See, now we have to develop royal entrepreneurs. 
that is most important now. So now the agriculture, though agriculture is being treated as an industry, but presently agriculture is not run by entrepreneurs. That is the problem. To scale up, agriculture has to run by entrepreneurs. entrepreneurs. I think that, that, is, that is the focus. Sopnanil Barwa, agriculture has to be run by entrepreneurs. Because otherwise we cannot allow the it's entire economy to be siphoned off by a few handful of middlemen. Handful of middlemen are controlling the agriculture in the state. Sopnanil Barwa. Oh, okay, Sopnanil Barwa is I off. That. Yes. Uh, I feel uh, there's a t time has come to bring private sector expertise in the agriculture sector. There's two reasons for it. Earlier, demonetization could not do it. The you know, transaction, money transaction, cash transaction to be reduced. Earlier, everything is cash transaction in agriculture. Now, because of COVID, people are scared about using a big amount of cash. I b there's a chance to transfer the money online to an agriculture, to the, to the uh, farmer, and you do transaction of supply chain. So I believe the timing is right to bring the private sector to the, uh, to the, supply, uh, to the supply chain. Yeah. They can bring value in terms of money, the white money. They can get cash uh, working capital limit yeah. and they can they can explore new markets yeah. they can and that will be sustaining to the support to the state government state government has to provide the supply chain linkage in terms of identifying the farmer identifying the product they can do the marketing i must tell you one thing i personally started doing it personally i'm because i have realized okay. this is where entrepreneurship is required i personally okay. am working on this i believe this is a sector private sector will yeah. come uh, and this will help uh, the entire I will, I will, I will, yes uh, uh, dr abhijit sure yeah can i just add? yes abhijit sharma yes uh, uh, I agree totally with what Shankarno said. We also have now, and we are working with this new group of entrepreneurs called the Startup Guys. Uh, we, in fact, in I, we are just um, going through a process of uh, giving uh, 5 lakhs to 20 people. Uh, over. We have selected for a uh, pitching exercise. Now, we have seen some of these guys have ideas. These are the guys who actually should be in the agriculture offering solutions. They bring in technology, so that is something one. Number two is something that I feel uh, we have not leveraged so far very strongly. This is, we have Government of India schemes, like the MSME, we have cluster schemes, where the entire fund comes from the Government of India. 95% comes from the Government of India, only 5% is the state share or the SPB share. I is running some of these cluster programs. We need to expand that. The money comes directly to the uh, cluster, where without any uh, intervening paid. So, and the state doesn't have any um, role in terms of uh, share of cash. That immediately puts a stimulus on the rural economy. So together with right. agriculture, the non-farm. No, no, tell me, tell focused. me, Dr. Abhijit Sharma, out of these 20 startups that you are supporting, uh, now, has, is, uh, final yeah, has, yeah. Uh, is there anyone who wants to, is, is there anyone related to the agriculture sector? Oh, yeah, they mean, they, they are, they are, there are five, six of them and many more that are, they are in the idea, in the idea stage. So actually, that is I see a lot of opportunity there in terms of day translating. Yeah, or but, in technology but, but Sopnanil Barua, you know, uh, organizations supporting 20 startups yeah. is a good beginning. But to make, make it into a movement getting immediate impact on the ground, I think the government has to initiate a different kind of an agriculture policy where the farmers are getting, farmers need to get the impetus right now. Uh, yes, I, I think the govern, government, uh, the agriculture department possibly has gone into uh, slumber again. You know, the initial uh, impetus or trust that they had taken at the time of uh, uh, the, the media attacking them for the wastage of the, of the vegetables around. Now, that emphasis seems to have been lost somewhere. And I think it's very necessary that the government comes out to take the assistance of the supply chain and see how all markets can be created because ultimately producing is not uh, so difficult as much as it is for marketing the produce. Now who is going to market, who is going to link them up, what is possible and I think in this kind of a situation the agencies like uh, you know the government of India agencies that are already there, NARAMAC, NEHTC, they should be more proactive and I, uh, come forward as I always say that the NEC has to be more proactive. And, no. uh, no, you know, another now, thing which I see Mo is that the instead of... Yeah, uh, yes, Moyurbara, you know, with all, all, uh, all due respect, government has set up a committee, government has taken a move. But, uh, you know, but that committee should comprise entrepreneurs, businessmen, farmers. These are the people who should be in committees, who can come up with practical ideas, who can come up yes. with practical suggestions to show them the road ahead. 
but uh, I am not quite sure if there are any entrepreneur, any businessman, anybody from the trade and industry body in committees which are interested to do, uh, you know, suggest economic revival for the state in these critical times. Uh, is it a yes, valid sir, question very, very or not? Right. Is it a valid yeah, question very, or not? Very right. I don't know the composition of the committee right now, but was be if what you are telling or what you are hinting at, if that is the fact, then government can always go ahead and analyze the committee. It's an evolving crisis. In the last three months, every day we are learning new, new things. If government has formed a committee which is somewhat insufficient to tackle the crisis head on or squarely or roundly, I think they should analyze the committee. And secondly, everyone is telling was about telling the government and what agriculture department and other departments and do. I agree with them, but at the same time as a society also there has to be a sense in the thought process of the society to what extent you and i respect a farmer to what extent any middle class man who goes to a shopping but mall let me, and watches let a me movie interrupt you weekly, let me they, I love to, let me farmer? let me interrupt you that and means, bring to your notice yeah. which we have yeah. been showing where is the civil society in assam in the last two and a half months that is a question so, i am going to strongly ask where is the civil yeah, yeah, society? Yeah, that, what that, is their that, role? I will try to answer. Ne, Wasbi, but just let me finish this point. The whole, I think this is very important. The process of cultivation, the process of farming, the whole process of agriculture, there has to be, to some extent, it should be romanticized. Why I'm using the word romanticization? Until and unless your respect and internal love and belongingness comes to this particular profession, only with our slick talk and all, this is not going. Because this I have seen for last 20, 30 years. Nothing much is happening everyone talks about the farmer during the election time and all but ultimately his plight or the workers plight remains the same that's why in the initial part also i said I think, they are the real I engines think, of I growth think, in this I country think, so i think i think, I think, I think the be, ball be, if I you think allow the... me allow me 10 seconds that thought process whether it is for a writer columnist journalist uh, or civil society there has to be a change then only collectively we can deal with the crisis in a much more meaningful way as a as a, as a media organization or as a journalist, we can only raise this issue. I think the, the game changer could be trade, local trade and industry bodies like pharma, yes, yes. like Fina, leading from the front and, and local entrepreneurs coming yes, up, yes. coming up to work out a strategy with hand holding with the farmers on the ground. There has to be synergy between the local entrepreneurs, a local trade and industry body and the farmers of Assam. On, on this note, I go for a break. When I come back, I will seek the opinion of the panelists whether this can be worked out or not. Uh, don't go away. I'll be right back. Okay, welcome back, uh, Dr. Uh, Abhijit Sharma and Mr. Pobitra Buraguhai. You know, first uh, to Dr. Abhijit Sharma. Now, before going on, going to for the break, you know, we were asking whether and there is an entrepreneurial class, whether local entrepreneurs, a local trade and industry body, an institution like yours, that is IIE, and the farmers get together and start a revolution in the state to create opportunity out of this adversity is it really possible or is it a studio you know talk or is it a mere mere no, television studio talk no it's absolutely possible the the startup thing that we are talking about neres yeah. northeast uh, regional entrepreneurship yeah. summit we and finer have collaborated so we have done it Jointly. for the entrepreneurs in the urban space uh, definitely we could do it in the rural space so that is a beginning that we have done we have we are working very, very closely. I personally believe <clears throat> that entrepreneurship has to begin with an entrepreneur. And we need to keep entrepreneurs in the you know, entire ambit of building entrepreneurship. So I think that definitely is one key point. But I'd like to make another point. Yeah. Uh, that is, this is about in the agricultural space, if you need to increase volumes, because marketing and all that will happen only if volumes happen. And volumes can only happen if aggregation takes place. And aggregation can take place only if you have something which is now changing the agricultural landscape across the country, which is called a farmer producer company. Now, that is something we need to promote. Yes. The Prime Minister has been doing, I mean, has uh, promised for 20,000. Unfortunately, there are only two institutions which is going to do that. 
uh, we believe for the northeast particularly there has to be a local institution which will do that unless we don't do that we will but, miss but, the bus but, uh, that is something our own state governments can create these things no they, they don't have the funds to do that but, in, uh, but i think that. the state government should definitely should push this because it's only through this institutional building mechanism that we can okay, create let what me we take call a, let me take a practical view from from pobitro buragohai the finer president uh, can we expect an organization like yours to look into this this uh, pharma entrepreneur partnership and collaboration with specialized institutions and the state government yeah already we are working hand in hand with iie and also we are but when are we going to get it see on the ground transfer has to take place to the ground now it has already started this is the nrc is the first year before that also we were working with them this is the major step we are going to take we are going to give five lakh is to the 20 in june first week to june first week already selection procedures is going on moreover to boost up the rural economy i think agriculture along with the agriculture we need to give more importance to fishery poultry livestock and yeah, handloom and textiles you see in northeast if yes. you go to the rural Because areas these are our strengths these, these are, are our strengths apart from the traditional tea and oil yes you see any business cannot be sustained for a long period if it is not based on its core competencies that is most important so handloom and textile this is, is based on its core, core competencies skill is there everything is there only they are just only having so, problems so so sapnal barwa sapnal barwa now now is the time to act now now yes. we cannot do too much of research and development on these things i think these are ideas which has to be translated into action very quickly don't you think we must uh, have the chief minister having a having a high level ministerial group to work on a mission mode we can have the chief minister we can have the agriculture minister we can have the industries and commerce minister three to four we can have the fisheries and veterinary minister who is the agriculture minister himself so these are the few people who need to sit together and bulldoze things isn't it textile minister textile minister i think uh, it will be slight they'll have a government interpretation to things and i have been myself having worked in the government uh, you know we are not uh really speedy enough to come to solutions our reaction time is much more longer yeah. what i personally believe is that you know the industry something like the bombay club which we hear in industry i think so far as industry and agriculture is concerned it is about time that you know a, a parallel effort to the government efforts really begin as you had suggested and we must come back and you know some organization or some particular person group of persons can really sit down we can have an informal shadow uh government of our own and come out with the suggestions and give it to the government to implement or to consider whether they look at it uh, how they are going to fund or what are the alternative funding yeah. agencies that are available okay uh, uh, so okay, i, I think so. uh, this role of an, a particular ngo in in formulating a alternative plan to the government initiatives has to be put in place and uh, that will definitely i wish i was a bit younger to be able to move around and really take the initiative you're, you're still very really young but that doesn't make uh, <laughs> you're I, I still very really young mr barua you're still very young so please okay <laughs> okay uh, sham kanu okay. okay i have okay. things to say here okay. the first uh, thing i want to say we must look at the strength as we have been discussing the strength is agri <laughs> we can be a production hub agriculture animal husbandry together for that uh, and marketing has to be Use done and handloom and textiles in together yeah, all yeah. entire chain of activity yeah, yeah. strength and we need to have a marketing platform private sector has to come on board in marketing and support the government initiative now what is needed for last few days i have been trying to talk about marketing agency all over the world and i have looked at our strength they, i found a banana is a strength but a banana has a problem it is not exportable because there are some you know it, it get cracked quite easily because of lack of input the water is never given in time so basically there are problem in our produce our produce some produce are not marketable it is not marketable because it is not as per the standard as desired in the market producer there is not marketable because of some input changes are needed to Quality make it marketable well the first thing government has to focus what needs to be done yeah. to make it marketing um, attractive to the market first number two private sector and personally as i am telling you i am personally working on this we can help in getting this into the market space agriculture uh, farmers government and private sector coming together can create a consortium where iie and other organization provide entrepreneurial That's support it. banks coming in for financial support is very much doable i am quite confident it's going to happen doable it's a uh, process we are going through the process and the timing is right there is so i think i think marketing 
Just yeah. I, I, I would like to share one thing. You see, quality has to be there, otherwise it cannot sustain. Mm -hmm. But most important that uh, for encourage the MSME sectors, there is a policy. In fact, there was a policy that was yeah. APSP Act, mm -hmm. Assam Store Prices Preferential Store. Yeah. That was scrapped. Now uh, that the, new policy yes, has that come APSP up. APSP Act it, is very important. But uh, Assam local people no, no, should no, be given no, preference. Yeah, that is that what I'm withdrawn. saying. That is what I'm saying. That after that 2015, the new policy has come up. That is PPP. Procurement Preference Policy 2015. Right. Right. That the same policy has been amended in 2017 again. But this policy needs to be more in a stronger form. Like you see, you see that product, you see, suppose that handloom products, if the government is buying for the official cartridge and the bed sheet for the hospitals and all the school uniforms, then, then all those ladies who are working I on think, that, they get the market. I think, I think what Pobitra is basically saying is that, you know, uh, if... just can I just come in and what yeah. point? Yes, yes. Uh, you know, what I was su suggesting is that, you know, the, we are providing these school uniforms. Now we have such a lot of handloom beings produced in Assam, but we are not buying from the local that's market. That's that, is what, that, two is that is one. That is one. One set of uniform for... That is one area where I think we can really yes, help I think these our are local the things, people out. These are serious points. These yes. are not, not funny points. These are serious points being raised, I think. Somebody in the government has to act on that. And moreover, that's what the point which I was trying to make before Sopnanil uh, intervened, is that our, our Prime Minister has come up with a very good appeal. Go local, go vocal for local. Yes. We can convert it into yes. these things. We should buy local, we should you know, consume, produce and consume local. Yeah. So that is what we can transform. Now, Moir Bora, uh, do you think entrepreneurs, agriculturists, that means the farmers, government and institutions uh, giving R&D support, do you think they can come together? Is it a doable idea? Absolutely doable, but uh, uh, till now the earlier experience was not very encouraging. But now because of the pandemic situation, everyone has to realize, notwithstanding what the Prime Minister said, that if we do not do it, ultimately we will not be able to survive economically as we wanted to survive. So having said that, let me point out two, three things. Sam Kanu was telling about everything is a uh, some sort of a strength in Assam. I agree with that. Provided there we can ensure some quality. And how we can ensure quality in one acre of land, half an acre of land, where hundreds of farmers, thousands of farmers are there. You have to bring about economies of scale. And for bringing about economies of scale in farming and cultivation, you need some farmer interest groups or joint liability groups or the farmer producer companies, which Dr. Obhijit Sarma was highlighting. Yeah. Unfortunately, in the northeastern region, the farmer producer companies are not doing Doing as well as it has been doing in southern India or in the probably in the state of Maharashtra, because if hundreds or thousands of farmers come forward, they will have the they can dictate also terms to the market in right. terms of buying of all the inputs of pesticides right. and fertilizers, and also at the time of sell, selling their goods, and they will be able to ensure the quality. Because ultimately, for a consumer like you and me, if you do not find quality in the produce, we are not going to buy. The market is a very very cruel, ruthless place. If there is quality, definitely they are going to lap up but if there is no quality quality many of the farmers produce will really rot in the battle field that okay. keep on saying that that's why very, I said they very well said uh, economies of scale and farmer interest groups have to be formed in the state now now uh, dr abhijit sharma you know uh, the state's own internal revenue has dwindled we know why because of the lockdown now, without revenue, and there are a lot of things which, which individual enterprises actually cannot do. We, have, we need the government support. We alone cannot get only the central funding. States uh, has to generate their own resources. Now, we do not know when uh, we have to live with the lockdown for how long. No one knows. We might have to live for another six months like this. Now, the point is, what are some of the ways for internal revenue generation? Because that is also important. No, I, I, I begin with what I said a little earlier, that you know, we also can leverage funds which are available at the central government level, which I already have suggested. That already allocated funds, budgeted funds. Budgeted funds under okay. this MSME for agriculture and where the state's share is very little. And we are working with uh, two of MSME schemes, Purti and MSME yeah. CDB. So I know that. Now, I think we need to leverage on that. Unfortunately, what happens is at the state government level, the capabilities is low <coughs> in terms of translating that into something meaningful. So I think with the capabilities, we need to look at institutions which have the capability to house it yeah. and run it. One. So we can leverage those schemes. 
two, I think internal generation is something that I said is that you need to look at uh, what uh, Shankanu was saying, that we need to look at how do we now uh, generate internal uh, economies of scale, that short value chains that I'm talking about, that is something that we need to push forward. Because without that, without the economic boosting up, it will be very difficult to generate uh, internal right. uh, revenues for the Right. Uh, I'll, 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 you want to make a point? I want to make a final comment because I'm running short of time. Uh, so I feel that, see, everything cannot be government, but my first request to government with this platform is that please support the small entrepreneurs. They need the support. The micro. Because the micro entrepreneurs, they create the economy. When they are sustainable, they pay you GST. Mm -hmm. When they are not, by, they are closing down, they are not paying your money. First point is that we must revive the local economy. The local economy is a local entrepreneurs. Give them support, number one. Number two, for the purchasing purpose, for activities, encourage local entrepreneurs, for the hoarding activities and various kind of active, low scale activities. Our local entrepreneurs can do well. And if a local entrepreneur is created, he encourages 10, 15 more local entrepreneurs. So what I'm trying to request government of Assam that please, Please buy it from a local entrepreneur wherever possible. If the quality is at the level, suppose 25% minimum, if you can say the local entrepreneurs are given preference yeah. in buying a furniture or kind of product for your schools or college or hospital. So please focus on the, encourage them. And what Swapnilla also and Pavitra also spoke about, buying textiles. Buying textiles. So as a whole, create a local economy and they will give you internal generation. Absolutely. They will give Absolutely. you taxes and, what and that becomes a fundamental for future. Uh, now, what Pavitra 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 your yeah. uh, final comments. Yeah. 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 What you have suggested is a good suggestion because you see, once the government is purchasing directly from the local entrepreneurs, the government's spending will remain within the state. True. It will help to generate government revenue as well as that industry will expand, the local entrepreneurs can expand, then they can create more employment generation. So spending will remain within the state, that is more important. Okay. Yeah. So, so there, are, there are possibilities which we need to apply our mind and get swing into action. Uh, you know, uh, Sopranil Barua, your final comments, uh, you know, what are the three things that you would do if you were given the full charge? Well, I think first thing is buying local and paying the entrepreneurs in time. Secondly, creating, linking them to bigger markets so that, you know, once they achieve the economies of scale, they can really go out into the big thing. And in the interim, uh, uh, the very small entrepreneurs who have their loans due an interest uh, moratorium must be allowed till they can really come back uh, on their own. Not deferred payments of their installments, but a moratorium on the interest. Regarding migrants, yeah. I would like to share two things. Yeah. Uh, if we can give them a short term uh, training also, through I ITI and all, that will also be helpful. And that may or may not be possible now in the uh, present situation. That is also another thing. You see, if we can project them as a skilled workforce, that would also help the outside in investment. Absolutely. Outside yeah. investment. They can I, be I, asset. Now in Surat, they what can happened? be an asset, but, uh, but as uh, many of our panelists in this discussion has said that first of all, we need to have a database. Absolutely. We need to, we mapping, need to of resources. mapping of resources. Mapping of resources. And that can Skill be easily mapping. done. Yeah. That can be the moment they enter Assam, yeah. that can be done. The moment they are put in the quarantine centers. Now the government of Assam has made it very clear. Mm -hmm. Mandatory 14-day quarantine has to take place. And even home quarantine people, if they violate, they may be arrested and there may be criminal charges leveled against them which may be not bailable, non-bailable. So but, the Assam government is very clear on quarantine. So that means 14 days you have to, you have at hand. 14 days their database can be created, you know, wherever they are. They, they will be registering no, somewhere. No, but then Bosbir, I understand yeah. the government of Assam <coughs> is doing some mapping of resources okay. through the to their departments, the panchayat and rural development, and the that's what I understand. But this so will be done at the front quickly. line. This will be done by the front line workers who meet them at the first instance. That will be the easiest right. to do. Uh, Moyubara, uh, your Moyubara, 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 final yeah. comments. Final yeah, yeah. comments. So my point is, my point is very very simple. The people who have returned to our states, our brothers. First of all, we have to treat them as people with huge potential. They are the people who used to run the engines of mainland India yes. for many years. Now, due to some fear factor, they have come back. So we must treat them after complying with all the medical formalities of 14 days quarantine, we should try to treat them, try to talk to them, try to understand their behavior and try to understand their psyche so that how best they can be utilized, maybe in a government sector or maybe in a coordinated sector between finer and other players on one hand and government on the other hand. We must try to uh, accept that, that they are our assets, not liabilities in any uh, stance of the world. 
terms of the world. That's what I mean to say. They are greatest assets. We have to treat them now that accordingly. That is, it is our bounded duty. And when I say us, it is not only government, it is for everyone. The government and the civil society and all the so-called uh, concerned citizens of the society. So last night, I just want to one yeah. For the industries, <coughs> when you try to attract industries, they always talk about availability of manpower in Assam. Yes. These yes. people can be that available to yes, manpower, yes. be it IT, be it or engineering skill or factory skill. We need to use them wherever possible, and it can be a marketing proposition. This yes, is manpower. That is this is my land. Now, Assam government, final point. Please get your land bank place in place. Please get your power connection in place Absolutely. and get investment done. Along with land and power. Along with land and power. And man and power. Absolutely. We can project them as an asset. For factory manpower. Yes, yeah. yes. Even in Japan. Actually, we went to Japan uh, last November from, as a final delegation. They, were, well, they wanted to come to India. And they have already surveyed. And then yeah. they, basically they wanted to come to northeastern region True. because of the cultural affinity and food habit. Okay. So that can be, we All can right. project them as a... All right. Uh, I think that it is now clear that actually all is not lost. What we need is to channelize things in the right direction for that some amount of political will. In fact, a huge dose of political will is necessary. And our political leaders, both in Assam and the Northeast, can actually gather that will. They do, it's, I'm not saying they don't have the will, but all they need is to sit down and channelize this will and show action on the ground and that they cannot do on their own. They have to use the entrepreneurs, the trade and industry bodies, the civil society, and most important, men on the ground who are toiling day in and day out to make our fields come alive with the produce. Uh, I think that is not happening. The farmers must be uh, made entrepreneurs and somebody has to do hand holding if we have to change Assam's economic profile or for that matter, the economic profile of the entire Northeast. We hope a sense prevails and we hope we can see efforts in this direction. Uh, I wish to thank all my panelists for participating in the show and the viewers for watching the program. Good night and goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Northeast Tonight, brought to you by Oil India Limited, conquering newer horizons, and Pew's Group of Institution, Gohati.